When we bought our dream house two years ago, we knew it needed a ton of work to truly make it our dream home, and updating this dark mid 90s style kitchen was number one on that list. In this video, we're gonna tackle the cabinets, and I'll explain the benefits of buying cabinets, building cabinets, or making your cabinets better, all with the help of my friends over at the Home Depot. So I called in some reinforcements to help with this kitchen remodel. This is my friend Clint, a retired firefighter with years of experience building cabinets and doing remodels. And this is Jeff, my right-hand man over at my Johnny Builds YouTube channel, and he's a very talented woodworker in his own right. So in the last video, I showed you the demo of the cabinets and countertops and all the appliances that I picked out from the Home Depot. Now let me explain my strategy for this kitchen in order to get the most out of our money. So my kitchen has a huge amount of cabinetry and I wanna keep what works and replace what doesn't. So starting with these upper cabinets above the countertop, my original plan was to reface these cabinets and just install new doors. But when we took the face frames off, we realized that wasn't feasible. I know we originally planned to reface all these cabinets, but the problem is, these aren't really even cabinets. This is essentially some plywood attached to some drywall. So right away our plans change, which is a common theme when you dive into a remodel. I decided in this case to build custom cabinets, which is easier than you might think. So I picked up some three quarter inch maple plywood from the Home Depot and started breaking down these sheets on the table saw. So real quick, let's jump into the design of these cabinets and our strategy for building them. So we're building the face frame out of three quarter inch maple and we're doing this first so we can build the cabinets to match. I'm also using a Craig jig machine to cut in pocket holes and that's what I'm using for assembly. And you see here how first I add some wood glue and then I clamp that joint flat to hold it in place while I attach the pocket screws. This helps to keep the frame from shifting as you drive in those screws. With those frames built, we attack the cabinets, and let me throw up a model of how these cabinets come together. The upper cabinets are 12 inches deep, so with a three quarter inch face frame, the side panels are cut to 11 and a quarter inches. Now, inch and a half shelf supports get attached to the sides with glue and nails, and this is where those shelves will get glued and nailed in later on. With these cabinets, I'll have a lower and upper shelf on the bottom, and then a 12 inch tall upper cabinet for extra storage, and these upper cabinets will get glass panel doors. Last, I attached the back stretchers with glue and pocket screws, and we built three of these cabinets, screwed them all together, and this whole assembly makes the upper cabinets. Now, those cabinets are built, and I can attach the face frame, which I'm using glue and pin nails. Next up, I'm attacking the cabinets to replace that long wall of cabinets that extended past the refrigerator. This wall steps down into that dinette area, and we're gonna take advantage of this space to build a coffee bar with an arched upper cabinet and a tile backsplash. I love coffee, and I've always wanted a dedicated space to house all my coffee gear and coffee beans. So I'll fill the space up next to the new refrigerator with two of these tall cabinets that will butt up next to the coffee bar. The coffee bar lower cabinet has two large drawers, and then behind the doors, there are also some interior lower shelves. To make the upper arch, I use my big CNC machine to cut out that arch, and I know the vast majority of DIYers don't have access to a CNC, and the great thing is, you don't need one. Draw your arch out, cut it with a jigsaw, sand it smooth, and you're good to go. To trim out the arch, they make this flexible molding, and we bent that around the radius, and last, we use some wood putty to fill in any gaps. So all of the cabinets we need to build are done, so we headed back over to the house to install. Now, starting with these two tall cabinets next to the refrigerator, the most important thing to do is first ensure that they are perfectly aligned. We used a couple clamps to hold everything in place and then drove in screws to connect the cabinets. And don't worry about those holes, they're gonna get filled in with some wood putty and painted over later on. Next, Jeff and Clint hung these upper cabinets that we built initially. You see here where they attached the cleat to the wall and that allows them to rest the cabinets on the wall while they went through 
through and screwed it into the studs. Last on the coffee bar, the lower cabinet had been set in place and we can assemble the arch, which is made from three separate components. On either side are tall supports that frame out the arch and these must be installed sitting off of that lower cabinet and this is gonna allow for that countertop installation later on. The first upright gets attached to that tall cabinet that we had already installed. And then next we could place the archway, attach that to that side cabinet, and then attach it the rest of the way to the studs in the wall. And then last, that right side tall support gets attached to the archway and everything is ready for paint. So with most remodels, there are certain processes where it can make sense to purchase or to hire out a task. And such is the case with these cabinet doors and drawer fronts. I had a local cabinet maker build all my doors and drawer fronts to my specs, and this saved me a ton of time. These are what are called shaker style cabinets, but I opted not to have that OG profile, which is gonna give these a more clean, modern look. The Home Depot also has an option for ordering custom cabinet doors online or at your local Home Depot. So all we had to do was paint and install them. And future Johnny here to show you this really Really cool battery powered spray gun that I picked up from the Home Depot. This thing operates off a 12 volt battery and was an amazing tool to quickly paint this kitchen and all the cabinets. It's so much better than having to lug a compressor to the job site and everything that goes along with that. So highly, highly recommend this spray gun if you're doing any sort of remodeling. For the drawer fronts, we shim those in place with some eighth inch shims and then use pin nails to temporarily attach them. And the nice thing about using pin nails is that they don't have a head like a brad nail. So they create a very small entry hole and that's easily concealed with the cabinet enamel paint that we use to paint all the cabinets. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this project, there are several different ways to tackle cabinets in a kitchen remodel. We had to build a bunch of our own, but we were able to save all the lower cabinets, which is gonna save me a ton of money on this project. Now, I wanted all of our doors and drawer fronts to be full inset, which again, lends to a more modern clean feel. So on the lower cabinets, I kept all of the face frames and then had the doors and drawer fronts made to fit in the existing openings. To make this work with some of the drawers, I had to install the drawer slides on the bottom of the drawer like I did with that lower cabinet next to the range. And as you see here, again, I took advantage of my CNC machine to design and cut out dividers to make a spice drawer that replaces the old one. You can also see at this point, the countertops and tile backsplash are installed, but I'll show you all of that in my next video, which is gonna walk you through the entire kitchen remodel from start to finish. Last, we installed all the pull hardware and I got these beautiful gold round bar pulls from the Home Depot. I've got a link for these as well as all the other products that I use in this build linked down below. And you can pick these all up from your local Home Depot or by shopping online at thehomedepot.com. All right, so there it is. Cabinet making, installation, and finishing are easier than you think, and any DIYer can tackle this project no matter how big or small your kitchen is. Nothing transforms the kitchen quite like redoing the cabinetry, and I'm so happy with the way this kitchen is turning out. When we bought our dream home, the kitchen was dark and outdated, but it's turning into the bright, clean, simple, modern kitchen of our dreams. Like I mentioned in the beginning, you can buy, build, or make your cabinets better, and in this video, I showed you the latter. The Home Depot has a lot of great off-the-shelf and custom some options for cabinets and cabinet doors, as well as professional installation if you don't want to tackle this part yourself. All right, let's check in with Katie and see what she thinks. All right, the cabinets are all finished. What do you think? They look beautiful. Having all this extra storage up here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We, we have so much storage. They're empty. <laughs> we haven't even put anything in there. Check this out. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. There you go. <laughs> I love how organized. Every single thing has its own little nook. Did you have a good time? No, I'll let you. Oh, and by the way, we are expecting our first child together soon. So it's really great to have this kitchen done before baby comes. All right, thanks for watching. Again, make sure to check out all the products I use, which are available at the Home Depot. And stay tuned for the full start to finish kitchen remodel coming to the Johnny Builds YouTube channel.